Deno is a simple and modern secure runtime for JavaScript and TypeScript that runs on V8 and is built in Rust. We're going to take a look at it in today's tutorial and we're going to have a look at why people are talking about it so much as well as some of its benefits and drawbacks. So you might be asking yourself what is Deno and what is it trying to do? Well, Deno is actually really similar to Node.js, which you've probably used in the past. It's actually a JavaScript engine built on the Chrome system. And essentially what Deno is trying to do is build on that by creating a better system that's a little bit more secure in its runtime. Deno is secure by default. And what does this mean? It means that it doesn't have access to your C drive, your local host, even your network or environment. It means these have to manually be applied. And unlike Node.js, which has access to literally anything, as soon as you install an NPM package, that can essentially execute code you might not want on your C drive, and you might not even know about it. Whereas Deno, you have to manually apply these permissions, so that way you can make sure that your applications are way more secure, while delivering the same sort of process with the V8 engine. Obviously, there is a lot more to it than just this, but this Deno tutorial is more about getting into the fun stuff. So without further ado, my name is Adrian. I do videos around design and development. So if you haven't already, hit like and subscribe and we're going to jump straight into it. So the very first thing we'll do is install Deno by jumping onto their website, which is on deno.land. If we scroll down, we can install it and there's a number of different ways to do this. I'm running Windows, so I'm just going to install it here with this PowerShell command. But you can always jump on and download their actual binary or releases from their releases page. Let's copy this formatting in here and we'll put it into my terminal window. I'm going to hit enter on this and this will start the installation. Great, that was really quick. And now we're up and running. We can begin using it by simply running Deno, similar to how you would run Node with just Node. With it installed, we're going to run a program. We're gonna do maybe a hello world, which is the simplest thing we can do. And we're gonna do this by creating a new web server that might listen on port 8000. But to do this, we might just use TypeScript instead of JS because Deno comes with TypeScript enabled out of the box. So it'll be really cool to give this a try. We can do this by creating a new file called welcome.ts and in here we're going to put some of this syntax in and test it out. I'm going to open up VS Code with a completely empty project and what we're going to do is create a brand new file in here called welcome.ts just so that we know it's a TypeScript file. We're going to jump here into the documentation and we're going to copy over this functionality and paste this into the file. Let's take a look at what's happening here. We're actually importing a package straight from a URL, which is really cool. We're setting up a version number and then we're pulling in the method or function here to serve a online application. Now in this case, we're serving it on port 8000 and we're going to console that out to essentially show that it's working. Then we're going to create a for await loop, which will be really cool. And we're going to respond to requests with a hello world message. Let's open up our console over here and run this file with Deno. We're going to do this simply by running Deno run and the name of our file. In this case, it's just welcome. We'll autocomplete and hit enter and we'll see immediately it doesn't work. This is because we're listening on port 8000, which requires the network flag. It gives us some information here. So it says that we need to pass in the dash dash allow net flag to have permissions to that. So let's copy over this flag and try that once more. I'm just going to CLS just so you guys can see what's happening. And in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go over here and after the run command, I'm going to pass in that flag before we run the file. When we hit enter on that, we can see that immediately our console.log has come out and we can see we're listening on port 8000. So let's open up a new browser and browse there to see if that works. And yes, it does. We've got our hello world and that's all working. What's pretty cool is that we can now use Deno to execute online files and stay safe at the same time. So let's take a look at an example of that. What we might do is run out this command for a welcome script and we'll pass this in as a Deno run. And what will happen is we got some console logs out. Now we don't know if this file is secure or not, but we haven't passed in any parameter. So if it was trying to listen to some network flags or make some changes on your file system, then it's essentially secure. We don't have to worry about it. If we now take a look at this URL and to see what it's actually doing, we can see that it's only console logging out. But in case it was doing something malicious, Deno keeps you safe from all of that. 
So something that a lot of programs do is grab data from the internet and use that data in different ways. And we're going to take a look at how Deno does this to make sure that everything is secure. Here's an example of what it's doing. It's grabbing some content here using the fetch API and it's converting that. It's going to print that out into our console. So this is the example we're going to be using. Now this example is already up available on the web. So all we need to do to pass it in is run the demo deno command. So in this case, I'm just going to pass it in here. Straight away, we can see that we don't have the network flag allowed yet. So let's pass that in once more and that should hopefully let us capture that data. So we're just going to pass in dash dash allow dash net. When we do, we can see that we're grabbing some input here from a test domain with some HTML and some CSS and whatnot, but it's an example of how this is able to work. However, this isn't secure enough. This is allowing access to all the net. What if we want to only secure to a single domain? Well, we can do this as well. If we pass in a flag with a domain name, then we're only giving access to that specific domain. Let's give this a test. In this case, we're going to run the command and only allow the example.com domain, and we're going to give that a test. Let's copy over this syntax and put this into our console. When we, when we do and we hit run, we can see that it did work, and we're only allowing the network flag to grab content from this specific URL. This way, we can be more specific on what we're allowing in and out of our application so that we don't get any malicious code coming in. So another thing we might need to be able to do is read files on our system. This is normally where we're accessing maybe files that we've got in a specific directory or maybe any directory in general. And we've got this available also in Deno. Here, let's take a look at what this looks like. When we're applying this, we're simply opening up a file using the Deno global command. And in this case, that's deno.open. When we do this, we're able to run an await command and then print this out. Now we're going to have a look at what this looks like as a use case. And we're going to do this by running this command here as an example. What we're going to pass in is a flag to allow us to read this content. This flag is dash dash allow dash read. And this will let us read some content from a specific path we pass. Now, in this case, we're passing in a Linux path and I'm probably going to replace this with a Windows path. So for our Windows path, I might just pass in the path here we're using for our hello world. And when I pass that in, we can see that we're reading this file. But if, for example, I was to remove this flag for a reading files in general, then we would get an error that we don't have the permissions available to do this. Be aware that Deno also is very supportive for TypeScript, but if you want to customize it, there's options for that available as well. For example, if we scroll down here, we can see that we can create our own TypeScript compiler options by creating a file and modifying it and setting some JSON objects of what permissions or essential settings we want it to apply. Now, I'm not going to go through this because this will depend on your own environment, but at least that option is available. Now, Deno also brings in a lot of functionality that you're already used to with JavaScript as well as client-side JavaScript on Chrome. You can have a look at all of them at docs.deno.land where it's got a list of all the web APIs that Deno provides. And if we go here, we can have a look at some of the examples such as the fetch command. We can do uh, intervals as well, such as set timeout and set intervals. So these are really cool, but something we might take a look at a little bit later. Deno also supports a program lifecycle, and this is similar to things you see on the web browser. So these are things like window.listen for a load or unload. And these are useful if you want to hook in certain application events when you're performing these functions. It's an example we might also take a look at in a future video, but at least one cool thing about this is that we can get some more event logging and control over how everything works. There is also testing in Deno and the testing is built in. So you can use the global parameter here, such as deno.test to try out and make sure that your application is working properly. And that's really cool. It's built in tester is running using JavaScript or TypeScript as well. So hopefully that gets us started with basic fundamentals. Be aware there's lots of work happening in this space and Deno is evolving. There's going to be more packages out there and if you want, you'll be able to have a look at building your own even. 
This is just an early advanced preview of how everything is working and it's subject to change as well, but this is version one and it's looking pretty good. I'm pretty happy having a look at how this works in terms of security because I think it's got a lot of potential out there. I hope you guys enjoyed this quick tutorial on Deno. It should give you a basic understanding of how to get started using it. If you want more content around Deno, let me know and I might make some more videos around it. Otherwise, I hope you liked this video. If you did, hit like, hit subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.